it has come to our attention that in the early years of the 21st century, man was being watched by intelligence greater than theirs. And yet, as mortal as their own. Through the chaos, we determine the fanatics and the fan. That's right, folks, you are listening to Fanatics and the Fan. My name is Hawk. Woo! Woo! I have, uh, we have an exciting week for you guys. Um, man, Brandon, can you believe this is, this is our, uh, a geek week here, man. You got Back to the Future, you got, uh, Vin Diesel's Last Witch Hunter, you've got uh, Star Wars trailer, Jessica Jones trailer, uh, some of the most amazing TV stuff. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, you're in Tulsa, right? Oh, yeah, I'm right down here in the middle of a wizard world, so it's been a lot of fun. A wizard world week, even. What an amazing, amazing week. Um, welcome to the show, Mr. Hemlock Knight. I actually get to hang out with you Wednesday night on October 21st, is that correct? Yes, sir. That was a lot of fun. Right, and we're gonna hear, we're gonna hear a clip of that here in a little bit uh, of us. We were in uh, 1984, doing October 21st, Back to the Future Day. Uh, did you see Jimmy Kimmel later on that night? Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. It, we and just to specify, we were actually in the we weren't in the year 1984. <laughs> we were in 1984. Um, I, I later on I got home and I saw Jimmy Kimmel and it was very cool to see Marty and Doc arrive in the middle of Jimmy Kimmel show. Although I got to admit, oh man, and they were doing the they were doing the voices and everything. I have to admit, I, I thought it was very unique that uh, Jimmy Kimmel got him of all people. Yeah, that, that was you know of all the people that would have you know. They, they could have called us. I'd love to have them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think it would be, you know, better for them. You know, I, I would see them on, uh, like, Jimmy Fallon. Right. That's what I thought. I would have figured Jimmy Fallon in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, Sandy, you were out there, too, weren't you? I was. And I still think the best costume there was Biff. He was actually really good. <laughs> he was really good. I like there were more than one of them. There were, correct me if I'm wrong, there were like four of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think there were. And welcome to the show, last but not least. Will, how are you from the Lebanon Comic Con? How are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. It's been an amazing week for you as well, and we're going to get into a little bit later, a little bit, little bit of that later. I want to jump right into some TV stuff, though, because um, it's been an amazing week for, for television. And I'll start it off, and I'll turn it over to you guys in a hot second. Uh, watching all the television that I've watched, I think the only thing I've missed this week uh, was uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. No, I saw that, too. I actually didn't miss anything this week, guys. How about that? <laughs> I'm, oh, that's pretty amazing. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> um, uh, I will admit, one of the things that stands out for me this week, and I'm glad Keith is not here to, to bag on me for it. Uh, 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 Big Bang Theory. Uh, if you haven't seen it, folks, and you will hear about this later in your near future, I'm sure you will. Uh, Thor and Dr. Jones, I want that song on CD. <laughs> and if you're a fan of the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. What was what was your highlights for the week there? Uh, I'll start with you, Will. You're the guest. You're the, you're the latest person. What's your geek TV been like this week? Um, a little bit of Big Bang. Watch Scorpion every week, Love and it. other than that, I've been focusing on my comic con, so I haven't watched a whole lot. I will admit, um, I, I saw Scorpion, and despite the fact that I think the show is an absolute failure across the board for different reasons, I, I love this. I love this week's episode. I, I love. I caught up. I've been watching the entire season up to now. I'm still proud of him, but I know it's not going to make it in the long run. Um. Oh yeah, I agree. Uh, it's got too many different aspects and too many similar. Things. What it was based around is kind of uh, vague in the first place. Exactly, exactly. Brandon, are you back? I am back now. Where are we at? <laughs> we are talking about Geek TV and what's yeah, what's the highlight? What's the highlight of Geek TV, highlight this TV this week? Well, I just went to it not too long ago, too long ago. And, and I was very, I was very. 
uh, it, it really uh, it really annoyed me that the whole Diggle and all of the thing just is instantly resolved. It took one episode. They're done. <laughs> I will admit I do like how Felicity did it. Did it. You know, I mean, if anybody's going to solve it, it's Felicity. That was cool. I like the fact that uh, both Arrow and Flash are doing so many Easter eggs. Did you see the T-Sphere? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I loved it. I got all excited. Because <laughs> that's going to be my that's, – that's one of my upcoming cosplays. I really want to do that costume. I just don't – you know, that's a lot of leather. You know, I just couldn't do it in anything, anything less than leather. But that's one of the cosplays I want to do. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, folks, then you really – Got to check out uh, this season, this week's Arrow. Hemlock, what was your what's your uh, TV geek of the week? Well, you know, uh, I actually haven't had much time to watch TV this week, um, but uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, the the on Arrow, the the Green Lantern Easter egg, they showed uh, Hal Jordan's flight jacket, which I thought was incredible. Um, but I'm never going to get a Green Lantern series, so I'm just I going to pout about it. No, for a fact, you're not. There's just no – the amount of money to do that would be astronomical, don't you think? I know, but I want it. <laughs> what about you, Sandy? I always keep up with Doctor Who. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and we still have the big debate going on the sonic screwdriver versus sonic sunglasses. <laughs> now, Brandon, you're a Doctor Who fan, right? Did we lose Brandon again? No, I, I just put my headphones back on, so I think it sound off. <laughs> you're you're a Doctor Who fan, right? Oh yeah, definitely. So are you? You've been you've been following what's been going on with it with this Sonic screwdriver versus Sonic sunglasses thing. I really think it's just a gimmick. I think that they there's they lost a lot lost a lot of fans in the last season, and this is their way to get them back. Like, why'd they change the screwdriver? Oh, but now I gotta watch this and do this thing, and now people are complaining. <laughs> now, I, mean, I think people this. are always on the offense about uh, Capaldi. I think you either love him or you hate him. Which yeah. I'm still on the fence about Capaldi, and it's season two already. And I've never yeah. been a fan of Clara, so it hasn't been my favorite season, but I still watch I still it because, watch I'm, a it fan. because I'm a fan. Yeah. I actually have... I'm not sure if you guys have been following it, but there's another announcement going on. Another thing going on about uh, Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. The oh, eight yeah. Book. What was that, Brandon? So the, the new eighth book, yeah. The Cursed Child. Yeah, it's set 19 years later after the end of the 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 series. It's about Harry's son. <laughs> I'm sorry. This just sounds like a great way to make a lot of money. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm accustomed. With, when it comes to Harry Potter and everything they've done, I'm accustomed to nothing but goodness. But in all honesty, does that not sound like just a money-making scheme? Am I well, it does. That? Um, the only problem is that um, the it, it does sound like a money-making thing, but also you have to understand that it's such a beloved series for so many people. There's such a huge fan base that I'm sure J.K. Rowling gets just hammered every day with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people saying, please write another story. Please continue this. I just can't live without it. Well, she never – like she wanted to keep writing stories in the Harry Potter universe. That's why she made the Pottermore thing. But so that just never really picked up. Nobody really got into that. And so now she's actually going to have to write a book, which I prefer anyway. So. <laughs> well, I'll read it. I don't I I think of our fans that wouldn't read it. Mm. Um, but it's only coming to the London Palace Theater in London. It's not coming here. <laughs> <laughs> and they have no, no plans for it to come here yet. We'll get it. We'll invite. We'll invite him to the Lebanon Comic Con with Will. <laughs> <laughs> you, Will, you can handle that, right? Uh, I wish. <laughs> <coughs> we'll get one Thank of the local you. theaters to get the rights and do it here. Speaking of <coughs> local theaters, is anybody going to see the last Witch, Witch Hunter? Oh I plan God! On it. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard nothing but goodness. Uh, uh, I was worried that it, that. It, it, it was following the same kind of darkness and, and, and not goodness as um, Hansel and Gretel or uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. 
but I've heard nothing but good things from it, even though it is Vin Diesel. See, it always makes me kind of cringe because I I remember seeing the trailer for uh, Seventh Son like a year before it came out. Right. And it was like, oh, my God, that looks incredible. And then it finally came out, and I went and saw it. Like, the weekend it came out, and there was three people in the theater. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. I enjoyed it, but then everybody else is like, oh, my God, that thing smells rotten. You know? <laughs> and I, I enjoyed the movie, but most people is pretty much critically panned. I couldn't heard, stand him. Exactly. I didn't like that movie either. I've heard some <laughs> but yummy goodness about uh, The Last Witch Hunter, though. Oh, yeah. Which is a great tie-in movie with it, with Halloween just right around the corner. And and my first uh, question for my, for my panel here, and this is for everybody, what are we wearing for Halloween? <laughs> well, uh, I'm actually doing a, a, a duo thing. Me and my friend of mine are doing Sean and Ed from Shaun of the Dead. Nice. 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 Give him luck. Oh, well, I've put so much time and effort into my... Judge Dread Judge costume. I'm probably going to wear that around town. Best Judge Dread costume ever. If you have not seen it, check him out on Facebook. One of the best costumes ever. Thanks, man. Sandy? I should have my Skyrim Dovahkiin helmet done by Halloween, so I'm going to test it out. You mean that BDA? Who's Row? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is her Skyrim BDSM costume. <laughs> Well, you know it. <laughs> Will, what do you got going on for Halloween? Well, I won't be dressing up. Uh, I've got the kids that are going to be doing their stuff, and then I may go and reach out to a couple of vendors at a local I'll, – I'll use the word uh, Comic Con that they're calling it, but it's more of a mocks tournament. It's actually – it, they... it should technically be called a Halloween Fest if they're involved with that. If they're not, they're missing the boat, but – Well, no, they are – but they're also having um, a free comic book day right. on the opposite side of town at their store at the same time as they're doing their comic con. Right, right. So I'm going to try to touch up around all of it and kind of see who they're bringing in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, so how many of us are not Halloweeners? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like wearing Halloweeners, but I'm not Halloweeners. If, if I can mm-hmm. wear every day spot Halloween, that's what I would do. <laughs> I'm still going trick or treating. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's because you're still 12. You're six foot <laughs> five years oh, old. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I do too. They usually don't want to give me my candy, but then I show up. I'm like trick or treat. Give me my candy, and they do it anyway. <laughs> and then the police show up, and it gets awkward. <laughs> Speaking of police showing up. That's a great. That's a bad segue to to something to, to what happened when I left uh, the event on Wednesday night, folks. If you haven't heard, don't know, or you missed it, this week, this Wednesday was October twenty first. It was Back to the Future Day at nineteen eighty four, right here in Springfield, Missouri. You got to listen to the, the the wonderful funness that we had on out there. So I'm going to transfer it over to myself again out at nineteen eighty four. October twenty first, twenty fifteen. October 21st, 2015. October 21st, 2015. Absolutely. <laughs> Folks, why am I saying that, that date over and over and over again? Because today is October 15th, 2015. Ooh, I know, I know. It's Back to the Future 2 day. And we are at 1984 right here in the middle of Springfield, one of the coolest places ever. It is cool. I love it. I'd live here if I could, but then my wife would begin to suspect something, and you know. Actually, I know for a fact he would actually never leave this place if he could. He, well, he'd have carpal tunnel, like you wouldn't believe. But oh yeah, no, I'd be absolutely like fused to the joust machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can make a bed on the pinball machines. That's fine. <laughs> Folks, I saw that in a movie once. <laughs> Keith, we've been looking forward to this day for how long? Uh, ever since we saw Back to the Future 2. Since the 80s. <laughs> and you've been giving me little countdowns of stuff. What what just happened? According to your watch, what just happened? Well, old Biff just passed. 